Hello and welcome to Marquette University in beautiful Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We are standing outside the Rayner Memorial Libraries located in the heart of Marquette's campus. To your left, about 1.5 miles east, is Lake Michigan. To your right, about 2.5 miles west, is Miller Park, home of the Milwaukee Brewers. Behind you, across Wisconsin Avenue, is the Alumni Memorial Union, as well as the majority of Marquette's administrative offices. On this side of the street are the classroom and academic buildings. The Rayner Memorial Libraries is composed of two buildings, Rayner Library and Memorial Library. Both buildings are joined by the bridge. Let's go inside and have a look around. We are standing in front of the Information Desk, your one-stop shop for research help. But if you can't make it in person, you can also call, text, or instant message your questions. On your left and right is the reference collection, as well as tables, chairs, and general group study rooms, and a graduate student study room. There are also a number of multifunction printers that can print, copy, fax, and scan. Behind you on your left is the circulation desk where you can check out books and pick up items that may not have been available in Marquette's collection, but that you have requested through our interlibrary loan service. There is also the dual staircase, which leads to the second floor. Before we head upstairs, let's visit the Digital Scholarship Lab in the lower level. Welcome to the Digital Scholarship Lab. So this is the space in the library that's dedicated to um, helping students and faculty with digital projects. And by that we mean websites, videos, podcasts, data visualizations. Um, and some of that work happens right here at this desk. So this is our media services desk, um, the Digital Scholarship Lab service desk, and it includes um, where you can check out over 300 pieces of equipment um, that include voice recorders, microphones, video cameras, all sorts of things, as well as some of the walk and help available in the lab. So during the school year, media tutors sit here to help you with, um, with your projects, and then our equipment assistants are also available to help. Some of the other items in the lab um, include two 3D printers. So those are available for both students and faculty. And again, something that we can assist you with. We also have a high-end uh, high book scanner. Uh, this is a, it's really easy to use and creates high-resolution scans. So you can walk right up and use it. One of the most recent additions to the Digital Scholarship Lab is the Augmented Reality Sandbox. Uh, so this is a fun way for students to explore AR, AR software. Um, and so as you play with the sand and move it, uh, the map changes. Some of the spaces in the lab are available to reserve. Uh, one of those is this space back here. While open, it includes um, a very specific uh, piece of uh, equipment, and that's our 90-inch touch panel uh, Microsoft Surface Hub. So this is available through our online reservations um, system to, to group students who might be wanting to do group study. It also includes some uh, video conferencing software. As you can probably see, we have plenty of space for students to study, work in groups, both openly and in rooms. Um, and then this, as we're walking through right here, uh, this is our open lab. So it's a mix of PCs and Macs, and it includes um, Adobe Creative Cloud, Tableau Public, and some other creative software that's available um, for facilitating digital projects. And you'll see that this is a space where students do a lot of media editing. If you're looking for a more enclosed space in order to edit your media, um, we do have another reservable space, and that's our sound dampened 
uh, editing room. So the sound panels on the wall allow it, you to make um, really crisp sounding uh, recordings. And then we have all of the uh, software available um, to edit as well. I think, and I can't, I feel like I can't uh, reiterate this enough, but I think what's most important about this space are the people. We have a lot of people available to help you, both with our walk-in support, but also by, consulta uh, by consultation, um, by appointment. So all of the staff that is dedicated to the Digital Scholarship Lab is available to work with you one-on-one -on, -one on whatever project you might have an idea, um, um, want to work on. Um, and we're here to help. We're excited to work with you at any point in your digital project. So I think next you're going to head up to the third floor where you'll learn about um, special collections and archives. So thanks. Well, welcome to the Special Collections and University Archives from Marquette University. We're on the third floor of the Rayner Library, and I want to tell you a little bit about the Special Collections and University Archives. We serve the Marquette community, faculty, students, and administration. We also serve the general public. Because everything that we have is in secure storage, it's a little different than other parts of the library, we generally recommend that you make an appointment before coming in to see the materials. The special collections reading room where we're located is used by researchers who are working with materials. They could be working with university records, they could be working with manuscript materials or rare books. Generally the space is reserved for those researchers. However, we do open a few tables to students for quiet study following the reading room rules during final periods. Uh, finally, we have a, a permanent display of materials, uh, one display of the J.R.R. Tolkien materials and a display in the reading room cases here that switches out a uh, couple of times a year. All of those are announced on the library website and they are uh, accessible to anybody who comes into the reading room. So let me talk a little bit about our holdings. Uh, Special Collections and University Archives has a few main component. Marquette University Archives holds the records from the university from its founding in 1881 to the present day. So what we have here is a small sample of uh, the types of materials that you might find in the University Archives uh, editions of the Marquette Tribune, the uh, Hilltop, which was a yearbook. Uh, we have sports records. We have administrative records. Um, everything uh, that documents the history of the university. We also hold over 200 manuscript collections, uh, which include the Bureau of Catholic Indian Missions materials, which date the uh, which uh, document the history of. Uh, Native Americans and Catholic missions from the mid-1800s to the present day. Uh, the Dorothy Day Catholic Worker materials, which document uh, Dorothy Day and the Catholic worker houses around the country. And then various manuscript collections uh, that document uh, people from Wisconsin, people in the Catholic uh, in Catholic uh, social action movements, a lot, of, a lot of different individuals. For example, we have here an artist by the name of uh, Carl Preby, whose material is uh, um, highly valued for its artistic uh, material. We also have a collection of rare books uh, dating from very early uh, Printed, printed materials. This is, happens to be a breviary from 1474 um, to more contemporary uh, modern materials. Um, we have a uh, uh, Hennepin early atlas, uh, early map of the United States. We have some beautiful editions of Shakespeare, uh, some lovely chapbooks from uh, printed in London in the 1930s. And over here, we have one of our most um, visible uh, rare books, which is an edition of 
the St. John's Bible. This is something uh, that is seven volumes. It's, a, it's created in the tradition of a manuscript. And it is, um, you'll see echoes of this throughout the university. You see this in a chapel window in Zilber Hall. Uh, sometimes we put this on display in other parts of the university and it's always on display here in the reading room. Uh, as I mentioned, we like to have people come and use our materials. All of the material is open for research, but we highly recommend that you work with an archivist to identify what we have in our holdings, the manuscript materials and the university archives materials. Uh, specifically have inventories that describe them in detail and an archivist can work through that with you. Uh, the uh, material is available for use for adding primary sources to your uh, research and we're happy to help you in any way that we can. Now you're going to go to one more floor before you head to the Memorial Library. The second floor of Rayner Library includes the current periodicals collection, the Jean Couget Music Collection, and the Manresa and Chiswick collections, which focus on Christian and Catholic spirituality. Behind you to your right is the Norman Ott Memorial Writing Center, where you can get help with any kind of writing project, research paper, grant proposal, or even a film script. Behind me, on the left and right, are the quiet study rooms and the gateway to the bridge, one of the most popular places on campus. Follow me and let's have a look. The bridge connects Rainer Library with Memorial Library and is home to the Brew at the Bridge coffee shop, open during the academic year. There are numerous tables and chairs to sit and read, grab a bite to eat, or meet to discuss or practice a group project. Local newspapers and popular magazines are also available here for your browsing pleasure. At times during the semester, it can be a bit difficult to find a seat on the bridge, so it's best to come early to secure your spot. Now, let's head over to Memorial Library, home to the print collection. Memorial houses the library's vast print collection, as well as reservable research carols for faculty and graduate student use. There are also numerous desks and tables for studying scattered throughout its five floors. It also contains two reading rooms. We're standing in one of them right now. The university's Haggerty Museum of Art also displays a diverse collection of artworks throughout the memorial and Rainer Libraries, one of which you can see behind me. Thanks for taking the time to learn more about the Rainer Memorial Libraries and the resources it provides for research and leisure. We hope to see you on campus soon to experience this library in person. Until next time, happy researching!